It is a deep personal privilege to address a nationwide Canadian audience. Over and above any kinship of United States citizens and Canadians as North Americans, that is a singular historical relationship between American Negroes and Canadians. Canada is not merely a neighbor to Negroes, Deep in our history of struggle for freedom, Canada was a North Star. On April 4, 1968, in Memphis, Tennessee, a man named James Earl Ray opened a bathroom window. He took out a rifle and he assassinated Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Two days later, he was here on Ossington Avenue, hiding out. Good evening. Dr. Martin Luther King, the apostle of nonviolence in the civil rights movement, has been shot to death in Memphis, Tennessee. On April 3rd, 1968, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. gave his powerful and final I've Been to the Mountaintop speech at the Mason Temple in Memphis, Tennessee. Throughout the speech, King appeared to acknowledge threats to his life, but showed no sign of fear. The following day, a 40-year-old petty criminal from Alton, Illinois, would shoot to death the civil rights icon. Although some accounts of what happened later have been met with speculation, what we do know is this. On April 3rd, James Earl Ray checked into a rooming house at 422 and a half South Main Street, Memphis, Tennessee. James Earl Ray acknowledged buying the rifle used to shoot Mr. King. Witnesses confirmed they saw Ray in the bathroom where the shots were fired and that Ray initially admitted to pulling the trigger once apprehended. We also know that Ray darted immediately and made his way to Toronto. By most accounts, including those of Ray, he made a break for it from Memphis in his 1966 Ford Mustang. He made it to Detroit, crossed the border to Windsor under the name Eric S. Galt, and took the train to Union Station in Toronto. Ray then walked across town to Ossington Avenue on the early evening of April 6th, where he would take up residence in a boarding house at 102 Ossington Avenue, now a nice jewelry shop in a vibrant community. In order not to draw suspicion from the landlady, Ray also took up a room on Dundas Street, just north of Trinity Bellwoods Park. Soon after Ray's arrival in Toronto, the FBI in Memphis publicized their assumption that Ray was the assassin. This set off the single largest American manhunt of all time, and had Ray's photo on the cover of every newspaper in the world. Now what most people would assume is that he was hiding. He was not actually hiding. He was going to all the dingy bars in the neighborhood. He was at the Drake Hotel, which was rough. He was at the Columbia Hotel, which is now a Starbucks, and he was hiding in plain sight. Ray was the world's most wanted man, and he would spend weeks just roaming Toronto, unrecognized. Just a few meters north of Ray's Ossington house was the Venezia Bakery, which he frequented. Now, I recently sat down with Nick Bellissimo, whose family owned the Venezia Bakery at Argyle and Ossington. They also lived in the house right behind me. We sat down and chatted about numerous instances they had with James Earl Ray. We lived in a house, a big house right next door to the bakery there. And we were inside. We, it was like an apartment type building with, you know, the door, you, you walk up a flight of stairs, there's a door, then you go up the stairs to the, the other floors. And the, it was a frosted glass door. Mm -hmm. So through the door, I was there with my mother in the hallway and we saw somebody walking up the stairs. And um, my mother opened the door and asked, you know, can I help you? And the guy said, I'm looking for Joe. And my mother said, you know, no, there's no Joe here, right? And I remember he's wearing a herringbone suit, had a hand in his pocket. I don't know, he may have had a gun, who knows, right? <laughs> but, um, you know, and then he left. and. After we found out who he was, we kind of figured out, oh, maybe, you know, he got spooked by a cop or something outside, and he ducked he into did. the house thinking it's an, not as opposed to a single family home, it was like an apartment building, he can get in there, and you know, he couldn't walk into a home, right? Right. But uh, he was able to do that to ours, right? So. And this is at Ossington and Argo. Argo, yeah, we lived at 53, right the next door to the bakery, right? And that was just up the street on the same side as where he was staying in that yeah, he house. lived, our bakery was 114, he was living at 102, which was seven, eight doors down, yeah. right? Now it was an interesting time here on Ossington in the late 60s. James Earl Ray was here. Two years prior, Muhammad Ali over at Sully's gym was training for weeks on end. Many people question how Ray was able to elude the public. 
Ray possessed numerous Canadian passports and documentation, which has always begged the question, how a petty crook from the US could orchestrate such an elaborate plan? Did he act alone, or who hired him? After being ticketed near City Hall in Toronto for jaywalking and knowing the officer might realize his mistake, Ray purchased a flight to Europe from a travel shop in the annex. He would leave under a pseudonym and Canadian passport in May, and later would be arrested boarding a plane at Heathrow in London on June 8th. Ray would initially confess to the killing and later recant his admission, saying that he was simply a pawn in a larger scheme. Ray would die in prison at the age of 70 in 1998 of kidney and liver failure. I won't live until I die And I work hard for my whole life Lord, I know how hard I try I won't live, I won't live till I die Oh, this more life than that What you give is what you get Oh, there's more